Hey everyone, so here we have one of the most renowned star trackers on the market for amateur and advanced astrophotographers. This is the Star Venture 2i from Skywatcher. Now this mount is sitting on top of the Aperture Photographic Tripod and this is a complete and portable astro imaging system. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the basic setups of the Star Venture 2i and I'm also gonna hit on some of the really awesome features that it offers. Now keep in mind this is the 2i, meaning it does offer Wi-Fi. I'll be providing some basic information on the Wi-Fi capabilities as well as the Skywatcher app itself, which allows you to control the mount and your DSLR through your smartphone device, so iPhone or Android. I would have really loved to put this mount and this you know, star tracker to the test, but unfortunately my skies have been so cloudy for the past several weeks and are gonna be cloudy for the next couple. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what this incredible mount has to offer. My name is Tegan and we thank you so much for watching the official channel, the YouTube channel of High Point Scientific. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with sky trackers, this is essentially a miniature equatorial mount that tracks the movement of the night sky via the right ascension axis. Now, as the stars and the celestial objects move across the night sky, this mount tracks this motion, which allows you to take several long exposures of these objects. The more exposure time that you collect, the more colorful and the more detailed your images will be hands down. So with that in mind, let's see what's included within the box of the Star Adventure and then we can get, you know, we can get started on the basic setup of this mount. Hopefully this really gives you a better understanding of how these mounts actually work. Okay, so laid out in front of me, we have every component of the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i, which is all included within this nice foam casing. I will give you all a closer look at each of these items while I discuss their basic functions. Okay, so first we have the mount base, which attaches directly to the tripod head and is actually used to hold the mount head in place. It is also used for adjusting your latitude for polar alignment. Next, we have the mount head itself, which is the star tracker. It contains the R8 motor, it contains the batteries, and this is going to be the piece of equipment that will drive your camera and your telescope or your lens across the night sky. Here we have two different style of camera or scope mounts. The first acts as a declination axis for heavier scopes or telephoto lenses for deep space astrophotography. When you use this, you want to make sure that you use the counterweights. Next, we have the smaller camera attachment, which requires no balancing. This is used if you want to take time lapses of the Milky Way or just Milky Way shots with a DSLR and a wide field lens. A ball head is typically recommended if you plan on using this style mount but the Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro Pack does not include a ball head. Next, we have the counterweight shaft along with a three pound counterweight. This can actually be adjusted up and down the counterweight shaft itself to help balance your heavier equipment, especially if you're using a DSLR, a dedicated camera with a telephoto lens or a telescope. And here we have a simple dovetail shoe that attaches the mount head to the mount base. And finally, we have our accessories. First is the polar scope illuminator. Second is a quarter 20 thread adapter. And lastly is a standard CR2032 battery. So this is a comprehensive list of everything included within the Skywatcher Pro Pack. So now let me show you how we set it all up. So for the setup, first comes the tripod. When you're choosing a tripod, you wanna be sure that you purchase one that is very sturdy and well-built. Here I'm using the Apertura Carbon Fiber Photographic Tripod. We also recommend the Skywatcher dedicated tripod for the Star Adventure. If you already have a really nice tripod with a quarter 20 or 3 8 16th adapter, we recommend going ahead and give that a try before spending your money elsewhere. So the tripod is going to be the most crucial piece of astro imaging equipment, especially when you're using star trackers like the Star Adventure. If you have a tripod that isn't sturdy and it's flimsy, you just may find yourself frustrated with wonky looking stars or less than satisfactory results. A well-manufactured tripod is 
crucial. So first you wanna level the tripod, and after leveling the tripod, we need to attach the mount base to the tripod head. The central screw on the tripod head here attaches to the bottom of the Skywatcher base. Here in Cincinnati, I'm at a latitude of about 39 degrees, so you want to be sure to set your latitude adjustment to correspond with your location. This is extremely important for polar alignment. And you can adjust this when you're ready to polar align out in the field. So if you look at the side of the mount, you will find a set of numbers and several different knobs. The knobs here on the side loosen the tension of the gears, which allows you to twist the knob in the front. As you twist the knob in the front, you will see the mount head start to move up and down. Once you twist this knob, you can now match the arrow on the side here with the corresponding latitude of your exact location. Okay, so we have the mount base attached to the tripod. Secondly, you want to attach the dovetail to the bottom of the Star Venture mount head, which will then slide onto the base. Now be sure to tighten it down with a flathead driver to ensure stability. You want the mount head to be firmly tightened down as you don't want it wobbling around during your imaging session. When you slide the mount head onto the mount base, you can now secure it with the knob on the side of the mount base. So next we want to install the declination axis and the counterweight bar. To do this, you simply want to loosen the knob here on the side of the mount head and slide the declination bracket into the shoe and tighten it back down. If you plan on using a DSLR in a wide field lens rather than a telephoto lens, this entire, entire declination assembly isn't necessary and you can simply use the included fix and dovetail to attach your DSLR to the mount. No balance is required with such a light payload. So if you're going to use the simply the smaller dovetail, we recommend a ball head or a pano head which is going to give you an improved range of motion without having to make odd adjustments to the right ascension axis um, just to find you know, that perfect angle. You have two clutches, one on the RA axis and one on the declination axis that you can loosen to allow you to point to your chosen target. I typically loosen both clutches simultaneously as I find it a bit easier to point to your target without you know, too much guess and check work. Once you have framing of your target relatively squared away, you can now use the two arrows on the side of the mount for fine tuning the RA axis and then you also have a knob up here on the declination axis that you can use to fine tune you know, in the de declination direction. Okay, so at this point we have everything set up and we're almost ready to pull our line, but first, you know, our next step is balancing and balancing is a very crucial step and it's going to improve your tracking performance. So first you want to make sure you balance in both the declination and the right ascension axis. We're gonna go ahead and start with the declination axis. First you want to loosen the clutch on the declination axis and rotate your imaging assembly so it's parallel to the ground and you don't want it to fall one way or the other. If it's camera heavy, you want to use a, a dove, like a four inch dovetail, like a universal dovetail. For example, here I'm using the four inch Apertura universal dovetail. It has quarter 20 screws. And if my, if my assembly is camera heavy or lens heavy, I can then make those adjustments by moving it up or down using the holes in the bottom. So once you have balance properly in the declination axis, you can return it back to its home position and tighten down the clutch. Next, we want to adjust and balance the right ascension axis. So you want to loosen the right ascension clutch, rotate your imaging assembly so that it's parallel to the ground, and you want to make sure that your assembly doesn't fall down to the counterweight side or down to your camera side. Um, if it falls to the camera side, then you want to loosen your dovetail and or I'm sorry, you want to loosen your counterweight and adjust it up and down the counterweight shaft accordingly so that it doesn't fall to either side. Once you've done that, you can now rotate your entire imaging assembly back to the home position and tighten down the clutches. So as far as setting up goes, there's kind of a, an order of operations in which I recommend you follow. You know, after you've leveled your tripod, you've attached your mount base, your mount head, and your you know, scope and your camera, then you want to point due north towards Polaris as if you were going to pull our line. Just get Polaris in the field of view of your polar scope for now and that'll be just fine. After you've done that, you want to loosen your right ascension clutch and your declination clutch and point to your target. Let's say you're imaging the Orion Nebula that night. Point towards the Orion Nebula, take a couple snapshots, make sure it's you know, all close to centered in your field of view, tighten down your clutches, and then you want to pull our line. I like to polar align as a last step 
you know, simply because the act of balancing or the act of, you know, attaching any equipment or even moving your camera and scope towards your target can alter your polar alignment a bit. So that, you know, that's kind of why I recommend it as a last step. After you've done that, then you're ready to start imaging, which brings us to our next section in this video. We're gonna talk about some of the features of the Star Adventure, some of the features of the smartphone app, as well as a basic understanding of the Wi-Fi capabilities. Okay, so on the side of the mount head, you have your dial with your different imaging modes for standard deep space astrophotography with standard sidereal tracking rates, you're gonna to wanna to turn it to the solid black star mode. You also have modes for solar tracking, lunar tracking, as well as time lapses, which is the RT and LT function. Now you can turn it, turn the dial to these modes if you you know have a standard intervalometer and you don't wanna use the Wi-Fi capabilities. If you do want to use the Wi-Fi capabilities, you simply have to turn the dial mode to the, to the app position. And from there, you can then connect your mount to your smartphone. Again, both Android and you know iPhone. You'll, once you're ready to connect, you'll see two blinking red arrows on the opposite side of the mount head, which means you're ready to pair. You want to go into your smartphone, click on your Wi-Fi settings, and wait for the Skywatcher option to pop up. Click on it, and once it's connected, you can then go inside the app and connect your app to the mount. From there, you then have full wireless control. All right, so now we're gonna go take a look at the different imaging modes on the dial of the Skywatcher Star Adventure. The RT stands for regular exposure time lapse. The LT stands for long exposure time lapse. The solid black star on the dial is used for standard deep space astrophotography. And the white star with the two arrows next to it, that stands for astro time lapse. The RT, the LT, and the astro time lapse functions are going to provide you with different time lapse results, which can really allow you to explore a type of photography or astrophotography that maybe you haven't ever been able to explore before. So this mount is really versatile in that way. But another important thing to note is that connecting your mount to your camera when using these time lapse functions is actually required as the camera shutter actually needs to be synchronized with the movement of the mount. So understanding these different time lapse modes, you know, does take practice of course, but I highly recommend checking the user manual as that will give you maybe a clearer picture of how to actually use these time lapse modes. It offers some great advice. Okay, so now that we've discussed the different imaging modes located here on the dial, let's take a brief look into the Star Adventures console app. So if you click on the app and you connect to your mount, you will see the different imaging modes listed first. Within each of these modes, let's take Astro time lapse, for example, you can see that you can input your exposure length and either your video time span, your frame rate, or the number of photos that you wish to take. After your parameters have been set, you can now save a profile and the app will save your presets for the next imaging session. You even have an option for full manual control as well as a polar clock that will help you with polar alignment. Okay, so this was the full review of this Star Adventure 2i from Skywatcher. Astrophotography is becoming so popular because tracking mounts just like this one provide such a versatile option for beginner hobbyists who are still wondering if taking the dive into a dedicated astro imaging rig is something that they may be interested in. This mount really fills this gap and opens this wonderful, rewarding, and incredible hobby up to so many more enthusiasts. On top of Skywatcher's fantastic customer support, your non-commissioned product advisors here at High Point Scientific are always more than happy to help you through your astrophotography journey. We thank you so much for watching and we really hope you enjoyed.